What is up, YouTube? It's Spooky Loops, and I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. As some of you already know, I stream full-time on Twitch, and as the channel grows, I'm starting to see more and more of the same questions being asked in regards to killer advice. The most common statements I get are how frustrated new to intermediate players are when it comes to getting looped or maintaining control over their game. Now, there is definitely a lot of content out there on how to loop as a survivor and run killers for an extended period of time, so I decided to lend a hand for the other side. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the best pathing and loop techniques to every common tile as killer in Dead by Daylight. That's right, everything from how to run shack to little trash loops and everything in between. Let's get into it. So now that I got your attention, I figured I'd start you off with something easy, LNT walls. Now catching a survivor in this structure is very easy, however you'd be very surprised with how many killers run it wrong. This tile consists of an L-shaped structure and a T-shaped structure, with two windows. The survivor's approach really doesn't matter as the chase generally goes the same way, but let me show you the wrong way to run this. This tile is set up so the survivor catches the fast vault every single time. By chasing the survivor from the outside, all you're doing is putting more distance in between you and your target, as you have to trace the outskirts of the loop. I'm sure you can imagine how this is not efficient. Instead, you want to cut the loop in half by going on the inside and forcing the survivor to take a bad vault or run back through the same window. Not only will this save you time, but this pathing is the appropriate way to deal with the structure. As a killer, you emit a red stain, which is very easily detected by survivors when looping. In the event of the survivor choosing to revault the first window, backpedaling once you've reached the middle of the wall makes for an easy hit. But what if your target seems more experienced? By turning around while chasing the survivor will give off the perception that you're backpedaling towards the window, as your red stain is no longer visible. The goal here is to cause a moment of hesitation and a free hit with this mind game. Moving on to another tile, the Jungle Gym. The reason as to why it's called this is because there are two safe points for the survivor on opposite sides a window, and a pallet. There are some loops that are just not worth being fancy, as you just want to eventually burn the pallet and block the window, but using the correct pathing will ease your pain. Most of the time these chases begin at the entrance facing the window, as it's guaranteed a fast fall. Unlike the LNT wall, going outside of the structure is your best approach. Eating pallets can seem annoying, but trust me, this is a good thing. Once they've burnt that resource, it's gone forever. Keep closing distance and fight the urge to attempt a mind game. It's almost never worth it in this tile. In case you didn't know, there's a variation to the first jungle gym, but this one's a little easier to manage. This is called a long wall jungle gym. Similar concept, however the window is attached to a long wall instead of a narrow entrance. Just like all loops, there's a right way and a wrong way to run this. A lot of new players tend to avoid vaulting windows as it seems like it's a slower option, but it couldn't be any further from the truth. Let me show you the wrong way to do this. Instead, vaulting after the survivor is your best bet. Once you see which direction the survivor is going, try faking your red stain to stall them into your vault. Our next structure is a long wall short wall prop. These tiles are mostly used for stalling as there's practically nothing other than a pallet and means of safety. Break the pallet and hold W on this one. Nothing too crazy. Alright, I think we're all on the same page when I say this tree sucks. Thankfully, this meat tree only spawns on cold wind maps, however it can still be a pain in the ass and is usually easily transferable to another structure. But fortunately for us, there is a correct path to take when you start a loop here. The survivor may lead you to this tree, but you control the direction of the chase. The wrong way to loop this area is clockwise, as the survivor always catches the fast fall.
By shifting the chase counterclockwise, the survivors force a slow vault the window as it's incredibly difficult to hit it fast. There are minimal means of mind gaming here, however, quickly revolting back into the window is your best chance of a shortcut as your model is blocked by the tree. In short, run the survivor counterclockwise until the window blocks or the pallet drops. The loop loses all of its strength once the pallet is gone. Next up are four long walls. These structures are fairly common on Auto Haven and Crotus Pren realms. The walls consist of one window and one pallet. Depending on the spawn, the window can be on the outside or within the inner walls. Aside from one long wall, this loop is relatively simple. When starting a chase, imagine like you're standing at the end caps of a grocery store aisle. Sidestep on the ends of the walls to keep visual on the survivor and funnel them into the pallet. This pallet is very unsafe, and that's good for you. The majority of variations of this tile have a half wall next to the pallet. This forces the survivor to take a 50-50 whether you're going to push the corner or double back to the front. Unfortunately, this next segment is going to be the last easy loop to deal with and it's on to the hard stuff. If you're liking the video so far, please consider subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up. This helps me out a lot more than you may think it does. Alright, trash loops. These props are the little filler loops scattered around most maps. They usually consist of some type of short barrier or structure with a vehicle and one pallet. Since the survivor can maintain visual on you at all times, your best approach to these are to force the pallet, break it, and just keep chasing. Up next, we have not one, but two styles of bus loops. The first variation we'll be going over has a pallet in the front and a window towards the back. Your best pathing is clockwise, and just like the cow tree, has minimal means of mind gaming. This bus is designed to eat your time, so minimize that as much as possible. The sooner the pallet is gone, the better, and keep forcing the survivor to vault the rear window. If the survivor decides to initiate a game of chicken at the window, use your red stain to fake one direction and then quickly adjust to the other. Being that the survivor has minimal time to react, more often than not, they're gonna get hit. I told you there were two, and believe me when I say that this version of the bus is a nightmare. I've seen some killers completely abandon chase when they've realized that they were going here. And to be honest, I don't blame them. This bus has a window on the middle that connects both sides and a pretty good pallet on the inside. If you want to be successful here, you're going to have to rely on vaulting windows and getting rid of that pallet, as simply trying to run outside of the bus will grant you nothing but sadness, I promise. Remember the entity blocks the window after the survivor vaults three times while in chase. Avoid going wide and follow the exact path the survivor takes until they've exhausted all resources. Catching the fast vault from the non-pallet side of the bus is a little bit more difficult as a survivor has to swing wide in order to do this. Most survivors are looking straight on in order to not mess up the vault, and you could take this opportunity to change directions to catch them on the other side. Never guaranteed, but can be done. Congratulations everyone, we've made it to the finale. Our final structure is the Killer Shack, arguably one of the most frustrating loops to deal with and funny enough the most dangerous if the basement is there. This prop has two exits, one window, and is home to the God Pallet. The worst thing you can do here is allow the survivor to loop you on their terms. By entering the shack opposite side from the pallet, the survivor has a guaranteed fast fault every time. Once that window is spent, you'll probably eat the pallet too. The reason why it's called a God Pallet is because you need to break it in order to continue a real chase. If there's one thing I want you to remember from this video, it's that you control the direction of the chase. You always want to force a survivor to enter the shack from the pallet side. 
The reason as to why is the window shares the same side as the god pallet and makes vaulting the window much more difficult, as the survivor has to swing wider to hit the fast vault. Even if the survivor is able to make the window, you're only a few short steps away from readjusting your direction and snagging a hit. But what happens if the chase starts from the opposite side? Doesn't matter, you control the chase. Grant the survivor one fast vault and simply revault the window the opposite way. Not only does this put the chase back in your control, but more often than not, the survivor won't see your revault until they're at the door. Another technique is faking your red stain at the shack door as if you're following, and adjusting last second to meet them at the window. Both of these options force the survivor to adjust to your direction, and pallet side is always key. We can't forget about our third point of entry, which is the window. Honestly, it still doesn't matter. Same rules apply, and you decide which direction the chase goes. If the pallet gets dropped and the majority of the time it does, do not attempt to work around it. Take the time and just get rid of it. I think that pretty much sums it up. That was how to loop every common structure currently in DBD. Now, of course, there are some map specific tiles that I didn't cover, like Pog Log on the Swamp or practically any house in Haddonfield or Baden. Because, no. But hopefully, this information was useful and you learned something new. I know a lot of my frustration in this game started with just getting my ass kicked because I didn't know the right way to chase someone at these locations. Were any of these loops or pathing techniques new to you? If so, please let me know down in the comments. I also want to give a huge shout out to that one guy D for allowing me to chase him all day to make this video possible. He's a really awesome DVD creator and I'll leave his link in the description. Go check him out, he's cracked. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and come check me out on Twitch sometime. I stream every Saturday through Tuesday starting at 6pm PST. Thank you all for the support of the channel as of lately, and I'll see you on the next one.